At the start of the movie, a grainy black and white footage from 1931 is shown featuring a girl standing with a cross in her hand while many people surround her, kneeling down in front of her. Ten years later, we witness Sister Narcissus's arrival at a convent. She stands in front of a wall riddled with bullet marks. Sister Julia explains that this was a closed-off convent before the war, and no amount of plaster could ever conceal the shame. Once peace was restored, the Doses made the decision to reclaim the building and convert it into a school for underprivileged young girls. She then asks Sister Narcissa to wait in that spot while she goes to inform Mother Superior about her arrival. While waiting, a marble comes rolling towards her. She picks up the marble and looks around, but doesn't see anyone nearby. Afterward, Sister Narcissa meets Mother Superior, who is overjoyed to see her. Mother Superior expresses how, during those challenging times, Sister Narcissa provided hope and strength, earning her the nickname the Holy Girl of Parablasco. Narcissa humbly states that she was very young then and barely remembers it. Mother Superior shares the surprising news that Sister Narcissa will be taking her perpetual vows among them, and this revelation shocks Narcissa. Julia then informs Narcissa that, as previously discussed, she will be taking the place of Sister Anise. Later, when Sister Narcissa goes to her room, she discovers a box waiting for her. Upon opening it, she finds a pair of scissors and a collection of letters addressed to Sister Anise. Additionally, there's a photo of Sister Sakuro. Suddenly, the chair in front of her starts shaking and then topples over, which startles Narcissa. Following this, she hears knocking on her door, but when she goes to investigate, there is no one outside. However, she finds a drawing on the wall. The next day, Narcissa goes to the confession box and confides in the father that she's uncertain if she's ready for the vows because she's filled with doubts. Father inquires whether it was the Blessed Mother who urged her to take the vows. To this, she replies that it was her own choice. People from the village came to see her from all over and asked her questions she didn't know how to answer. She thought that if she went far away and could lead a quiet, peaceful life, she might return and be certain. Father conveys to her that heaven has granted her a gift, and she is present here for a purpose. She must discern what that purpose is, and she can do so through prayer and sacrifice. Narcissa then questions what if she only saw what she desired? What if what she saw was the Holy Mother? To which Father responds by telling her that she is lost. Following her conversation with Father, she proceeds to the classroom and introduces herself. Narcissa writes her name on the board, but during this time, a girl named Rosa fixates her gaze on her. The children in the class are making a lot of noise, which frustrates Narcissa leading her to scold them. Rosa raises her hand and asks if she can be excused. Narcissa inquires about the issue, and it becomes apparent that Rosa has actually urinated. Narcissa grants her permission to leave, and after she departs, Rosa's sister Elvirita asks if she can accompany her. Later, Mother Superior shows her photo album in which she shows her photo and says that on this day she was anointed a bride of Christ. She says if she had not chosen a life-serving God, she could have been a dancer in a cabaret, but their dear lord had other plans for this particular servant. Mother Superior also shows her the photos of Sister Anise and then steps inside to fetch something. During her absence, Narcissa examines the album and discovers photographs of many other sisters. However, she notices that there is an empty space within the album. Later, she gazes at Sister Sakura's photo in her room, and once again, the chair topples over. Narcissa reinstates the chair in its position, and then a knock resounds at the door. As she approaches the door, she hears someone crying from outside, but when she opens it, there is no one inside. Instead, she spots a marble on the floor, which rolls to one side and vanishes into the darkness. Narcissa follows it into a cellar where a multitude of old items and statues are stored. There she discovers something wrapped in a cloth, and upon inspection, she unwraps it to reveal a hand. She informs Mother Superior about the discovery, but Sister Julia questions her about why she went into the basement. Narcissa explains that she heard a noise and assumed that one of the girls might have been hiding down there. But in truth, she isn't entirely sure why she went there. Mother Superior remarks that Mother Mary was guiding her, and there is no doubt about it. She explains that the hand is believed to be that of St. Martha, which had been presumed lost since the war. She adds that the place has never been the same since those events, but with Narcissa's arrival, it is nothing short of a miracle. That night, Narcissa observes Sister Sagrario working late into the night. Sagrario informs her that the girls have mixed up the order. She offers Narcissa a sweet to taste and instructs her to consume it all at once. Afterward, she angrily insists that Narcissa eat another sweet because they are consumed in pairs. Narcissa is taken aback by Sagrario's strange behavior but complies and eats the sweets. As she does, Sister Sagrario begins to laugh in an eerie manner. Narcissa begins choking, and two eyes emerge from her mouth, which turns out to be Sister Sagrario's eyes, but it turns out to be a nightmare. After some time, two girls enter her room and compliment her on her hair, but they mention that when she becomes a nun, they will cut it, just like they did to the others. 
One of the girls gazes at the drawing on the wall, but the other girl quickly ushers her away from there. Later, when she goes to her class, she notices that there are only a few children present, and they inform her that today is laundry day. She steps outside, where Rosa and Elvarita explain to her that the school does laundry for families who donate money to the school. Narcissa then asks Rosa about what happened in class the previous day. Rosa explains that she was frightened when she wrote her name on the blackboard. However, Elvarita intervenes and guides her away from the conversation. Later, while all the nuns are engaged in prayer within the church, Narcissa notices that something is amiss with her prayer beads. They start melting and transform into blood. Her attention is then drawn to a woman lying on the floor in front of her who begins to levitate in the air while staring at her. Narcissa is taken aback to realize that the woman is actually herself. However, Sister Juliet interrupts her and inquires if she can oversee the final prayers for the girls tonight. After the prayers, when she goes to the girls' room, she discovers that all of them are dancing inside. Initially, she becomes upset and moves to turn off the radio, but one of the girls explains that they aren't doing anything wrong. Narcissa conveys to them that it's very late, and it's time to sleep. In response, they even invite her to dance with them, and eventually, Narcissa yields to their persuasion and joins in the dancing. After this, she makes them all pray, bids them good night, and leaves from there. Later that night, Rosa accompanies Anna Mary to the bathroom and they hear some noises in the process. Meanwhile, we see Narcissa intentionally causing herself pain to gain clarity and strengthen her resolve. She prays to God, requesting that to reveal face to her and help her to grow spiritually while enabling her to always resist falling into temptation. Meanwhile, a bathtub tap turns on automatically, which startles Rosa, and she notices a pair of scissors on the floor. She picks up the scissors, and then Anna Mary comes out. Both of them begin to leave the bathroom but suddenly the water in the bathtub starts moving, causing both of them to become frightened. Rosa approaches to inspect the bathtub and observes some hair emerging from the drain hole. Simultaneously, Narcissa hears voices and glimpses a nun in the mirror, and the chair falls once more. Rosa picks up those hairs and only then Sister Julia comes there, and they hear the screams of a girl. Narcissa rushes to the girl's room and finds Marina crying, and Elvarita tells Narcissa that the girl cut her hair. Just then Julia also comes there and tells Rosa that what she has done is not unforgivable. Narcissa asks Rosa where she got those scissors. Rosa says she hasn't done anything and it was the girl. The girl had emerged in the water in the bathroom, appearing to be drowning and asking for assistance. Sister Julia slaps her and instructs Narcissa to return to her room. Narcissa returns to her room and examines the box, only to discover that the scissors are no longer inside it. The following morning, Narcissa visits the grave of Sister Sakuro, who passed away in 1936. After this, when she goes to the class, she notices that Rosa is absent. After her class, Narcissa goes to a basement where she finds Rosa confined in a prison-like space. Narcissa has brought her food, but Rosa explains that Sister Julia has instructed her to fast until she sees reason. Narcissa implores Rosa to tell her the truth about the scissors, to which Rosa insists that the scissors were already in the bathroom. When Narcissa asks about the girl, Rosa expresses that it doesn't matter what she says. Sister Inez used to say she wanted to know the truth, but after she told her, Sister Inez didn't want to believe them. Rosa reveals that there is a spirit of a girl present, and they must not toy with her or tamper with her drawings. Sister Inez drew the last leg on a hanging game to demonstrate that nothing would occur, but then the girl wrote her name, and Sister Inez left. Narcissa inquires what Rosa means by wrote her name, to which Rosa explains that if your name appears, it means you are cursed. Later, Mother Superior mentions that Sister Inez would have been overjoyed to see her wearing it on the happiest day of her life. Narcissa inquires whether Sister Inez left because she was scared, to which Mother Superior responds by suggesting that the girls have too much free time and fabricate fantasies. If Sister Inez had taken more action and enforced discipline, it would have been better for everyone. She advises Narcissa not to make the same mistake. She then leaves there to fetch Sister Marcella so she can take her measurements now. Meanwhile, Narcissa sees herself in that dress but then she notices that the veil is wrapping around her neck, due to which she starts getting suffocated. She struggles to free herself, but then her dress begins constricting on its own and gets torn and suddenly she wakes up from her sleep. However, she becomes even more frightened when she notices the drawing on the wall. Later, something in the classroom frightens Rosa, causing her to run away. Before Narcissa can comprehend what's happening, Alviria points to the blackboard. To their astonishment, they all see Rosa's name written on it, leaving everyone including Narcissa in shock. Narcissa goes to Rosa and expresses her belief in her. She acknowledges that she knows Rosa saw her and requests her assistance in seeing her as well. She shows Rosa the drawing and assures her that she will do her best to protect her. Together, they finish the drawing, and when Narcissa looks around, 
there is no one else present. She encourages Rosa to see for herself that nothing has occurred, but then the chair falls once more. Rosa perceives someone in the room, but when Narcissa looks back, she doesn't see anyone and assures Rosa that there's no one present. Rosa pleads with her not to move as she is right behind her, but it's not a girl, and she is saying something. Narcissa turns around and inquires about what she is saying because she can't hear it. However, when she turns back to Rosa, she has vanished. Narcissa immediately sets out to find Rosa but cannot find her anywhere, so she asks for Elvira's help to go with her to find Rosa. Sister Julia arrives and warns Narcissa that the more she believes in Rosa's lies, the worse things will become. Narcissa says she believes that there is truth in the girl, the drawings, and everything that has been happening. Sister Julia thinks Narcissa's interest is only solving mysteries and seeking media attention, without true devotion. She believes it's a sin for Narcissa to take vows and tells her to leave. Narcissa departs without uttering a word, and Elvirita informs her that Rosa has been taken just like Sister Inez. However, Narcissa believes that Rosa may have hidden somewhere out of fear, so they must continue searching for her. They suddenly hear Rosa whispering a prayer coming from the confession room. However, she finds the room empty and the door closes, trapping her inside, and Elvirita decides to go and seek help. She then hears father's voice from the other side, who asks her if she thinks this is one of her nightmares. She says it's true and she just wants to find Rosa. Father says she took advantage of that poor girl because she wanted to know and see. Narcissa says she has to escape this darkness and only then in a dual tone, someone says she doesn't always need eyes to see. Narcissa gets shocked and asks who's there. And when she tries to look through, it says she knows who he is. Afterward, numerous eyes appear in the confession room and many hands tries to grab her, but she manages to escape from the confession box. However, even after she gets out, she continues to hear whispering from the confession box, and as the door opens, she gets horrified seeing Rosa hanging there. After this the scene shifts to Rosa's wake ceremony, where Sister Julia tells Narcissa that Rosa put her trust in her, and now she is dead. If only she had listened to her, they could have avoided this tragedy. Narcissa then goes to her room and she vents her anger and frustration on that chair. As Narcissa leaves the convent, a solar eclipse begins to occur. She kneels down and stretches her arms, and Sister Julia observes her doing this. Due to her gaze at the eclipse, something unusual starts happening in Narcissa's eyes. However, Sister Julia intervenes, positioning herself between Narcissa and the Eclipse, and advises her to stop looking at the sun. As Sister Julia touches Narcissa's face, an extraordinary event unfolds, and Narcissa experiences vision. In these visions, she witnesses the destruction of the convent during the war and the theft of the relics. She also sees a man engaging in inappropriate activities with a nun. Suddenly, she regains consciousness, and Sister Julia attempts to soothe her. Sister Julia is shocked that the torch's light isn't causing any discomfort to Narcissa. Narcissa shares with Sister Julia what she witnessed during the war. Sister Julia asks her to stop saying she can't know anything and tells her that she is not going to play her demon tricks on her mind and asks her to leave peacefully. Narcissa attempts to engage with Sister Sagrariro and inquires about her fears. She mentions a cigar box in the wardrobe and asks her to go get it. She then asks her to open it and she will find a photograph of Sister Sakuro and asks her to give it to her. It is revealed that Sister Sakuro is the nun who suffered wrongdoings and became pregnant as a result. All the nuns were aware of this, and they had collectively decided that the girl born of this situation would never be allowed to leave the convent's walls. Narcissa removes the bandages from her eyes and starts rinsing them and only then she hears some sounds. We then see a nun moving towards her, and when Narcissa turns back she is surprised to see that it is Sister Sakuro. Sister Sakuro extends a flower to her, and as soon as Narcissa touches her hand, she experiences visions once more, and in these visions, she witnesses nuns separating Sister Sakuro from her daughter. Sister Sakuro's daughter had become seriously ill, and because Sister Sakuro wanted to take her to the hospital, the nuns locked her in her room. They placed her in the bathtub to lower her fever, but during this process, her head struck the bathtub, resulting in her immediate death, and when Sister Sakuro came to know about this, she hid herself with the help of the same chair. Narcissa, upon learning Sister Sakuro's painful story, becomes deeply angered and is transported back to the moment when Sister Sakuro is calling for help. She opens the door, and what she witnesses there is profoundly horrifying. Sister Sakuro suddenly comes to life and emits a demonic laugh. This sight terrifies Sister Julia, who is in prayer in front of her. In the present, Narcissa tells Sister Julia that she opened the door and Sister Sakuro is here. Sister Julia asks her what she has done, and she starts running away from there. However, eventually, she comes face to face with Sister Julia. She again runs away from there and comes to the classroom, where she notices her name is being written on the blackboard. Meanwhile, Mother Superior notices that Sister Sakuro's daughter is gone, and when she tries to look in, 
Sister Sakura pulls her inside the bathtub, due to which she dies due to suffocation in the present. Here a statue falls on Sister Julia, causing her painful death. Sister Sakura then takes her daughter out of the bathtub, and grainy black and white footage is shown once again. The movie advances to 1991, and Sister Narcissa, now elderly, joins Veronica's class as a literature teacher. A girl suggests that her name should be Sister Death. Sister Narcissa smiles at Veronica, and the movie ends. Thanks for joining us on our horror movie recap adventure. If you enjoyed the chills, subscribing would mean a lot. Drop a comment to share your thoughts and keep the terror alive. Stay spooky and see you soon.